Good evening everybody. I have seen a lot of YouTube videos showing off people's audio setups and I thought that I would join the crowd. This is a pretty old school low tech setup. It is January 12th, 2017. This is Northern Canada and this is my room which is on top of my garage. The room was built as sort of a last minute addition by raising the pitch of the roof a little bit. I was able to squeeze a room in here. I never thought I'd use it for anything but storage, but it's become my man cave. This is about, oh, half and half of my book and audio video type collection. And since I moved in, I've decided to populate it with a stereo setup, which I've picked up mostly for nothing or next to nothing, uh, using pretty much obsolete old junk. And uh, to me, it sounds pretty good. I'll just go through them. Uh, what I've got as a main unit is a setup that I used in my garage for many years, an old Pioneer QX949A quadraphonic receiver, which, as it turns out, has plenty of power after 40 years of working still, has a plethora of inputs and outputs, uh, just about enough to handle just about anything you want to throw at it, including my sound card from my El Cheapo computer, and a reel-to-reel, -reel, and an old Techniques 1200 that I used to dub records over and digitize them when I want to do that. It's a beautiful old piece of machinery, I must say, and what it does, which a lot of guys don't have, is it handles four-channel inputs and four-channel outputs. Uh, it has to be analog in, of course, because it's ancient and analog out, obviously. Um, so what I've been doing is I've incorporated a quadraphonic 8-track setup, originally, that I bought because I had a bunch of quadraphonic 8-tracks, which you will see on the shelf right there, that I'd had since the 70s, which I've augmented since then on eBay to about uh, 400 titles, including some pretty rare ones. I believe this one here is, I don't know if anybody else has ever seen this one, but this is The World is a Ghetto by War, Canadian release on a gold cart, um, which I'm told is kind of ultra rare. And uh, what I've done is I've got an old Pioneer. Um, it is a QX2100 8-track player from about 1973, quadraphonic. And when I'm playing the quads, I tend to keep the top off the deck because when you're playing quadraphonics, 8-tracks uh, of any kind, really, you want to keep a pretty close eye on them because when they start barfing tape out, it's kind of nice to know that it's done that, uh, as you can see here. Um, my copy of Michael Nesmith and the First National Band has barfed up some tape, so I've got a splicing block out there and my old Leatherman. And What I've been doing recently is uh, digitizing some of the 8-track quad recordings into a multi-channel Tascam recorder, which uh, turns them into a digital file. And when I play them back, it actually seems to improve the sound, weirdly enough. Uh, quite fun. You know, I just picked the occasional track from as I say, the 400 that I've got. Uh, there's some, I'd like to think, pretty choice titles from the early 70s, late 60s. I've got about, uh, oh, nine or ten Guess Who releases in Quadraphonic, a bunch of Elvis releases, some Charlie Pride, which, to be honest with you, I haven't really dug into too much. A uh, pretty good selection of uh, the Columbia releases, including Paul Simon, a lot of Santana's, uh, the only one I'm missing is the first one, which I would love to get my hands on. Um, Mott the Hoople, Blood, Sweat and Tears, Ten Years After, Redbone, Garfunkel, that type of thing. And, and a bunch of the other, you know, considered to be fairly good stuff. Uh, Steely Dan, a couple of those, which actually sound pretty good. Two of the Eagles releases in quad. Bob Dylan's got a couple. Joni Mitchell, sound terrific. Uh, one of the later ones. Uh, Steve Miller, Fly Like an Eagle, Band on the Run, and of course Dark Side of the Moon in Quad, which of course, you know, does blow your mind. Uh, some of the Carpenters, Cat Stevens, um, Machine Head, Deep Purple, Captain and Me, Moody Blues, about five of those, so 
pretty good selection of stuff to pick from and uh, <clears throat> spend many happy hours doing that. Uh, when I do play it back, I'll play it back through either a 4.0 system, and the 4.0 system uses as the front speakers a couple of pretty good, I wish I could find another set of these, but Techniques SBL300 with a horn tweeter. Just love the sound of these things. 12 inch woofer, uh, bass reflex. Sounds terrific. I don't usually use that old Marconi setup too much, but it does work. Um, and uh, when I use a 5.1 setup, I've actually been using for a center channel speaker uh, this setup here that I found as a fellow was dumping it off at the junkyard in town uh, that he built himself and I actually found it sounds pretty darn good. So I kept it. Uh, here's the corresponding techniques. Uh, here's some of the box sets that I've been messing around with. Here's a bunch of the uh, Bear Family releases that I'm a huge fan of. A uh, ton of the CDs, including a bunch of doubles and stuff that I have. And once I finished with the uh, Quadraphonic 8-tracks, I kind of moved up in the world. And about a year ago, I managed to get myself a TAC A2300, sorry, 2340R, which is a quadraphonic 4-channel uh, Simul Sync automatic reverse player. Uh, almost professional quality, I'd like to think, but uh, it just takes the smaller reels, not the big ones. But uh, works beautifully. Bought it on Kijiji. Works like a dam. And a bunch of uh, DVDs and stuff that I play sometimes and I'm bored. Um, and I also have, <laughs> just in case my wife kicks me out, I got the old snoozing couch, which comes in handy sometimes. I also have a cassette deck and a Kai that I picked up at a junk shop for about 10 bucks. Three head double capstan, serial cassette deck, GXC 325D with the Dolby system. Works just fine for 10 bucks. You can't argue with them. For my back speakers, I'm using Techniques SB2822, uh, which are nothing special, but they sound all right in the back. I've got a subwoofer down below when I'm playing 5.1 material, which I do fairly often because for any digital stuff that I'm doing, I'm using an Oppo 105 with the analog outputs uh, fed directly into the back of the old Pioneer. Uh, four channels. For the center channel, I'm using an old Harman Kardon uh, control amp A401, about 40 watts per channel, and then the subwoofer, of course. And when I'm playing the 5.1 material, which I have up here, which is DVD videos for the most part, and also Blu rays and the real piece de resistance, I guess, is quite a few DVD audios, which I've been told are pretty tough to get, and some DTS 5.1 releases, as well as a whack of Super Audio CD 5.1s. And uh, listening to that really bumps it up a notch in terms of sound quality. Um, as I say, the Oppo handles anything I throw at it. Uh, whatever type of digital media you want from a CDR to a DVD audio, it just sucks it right up to a Blu-ray for that matter. I also picked up years ago an old Akai reel-to-reel deck, which is a quadraphonic deck. And the cool thing about this one makes it kind of, I wouldn't call it unique or whatever, but it's got a built-in 8-track player, which makes it possible to play 8-tracks on the same machine. Got to admit, I don't use it all that much because, like I say, I like to keep an eye on 8-tracks when they're playing because you just never know. I've also got, and I picked this up at a junk shop locally here, an old B55 Lenko, made in Switzerland, probably in the mid-60s, idler arm turntable. Plays anything from 16 RPM to 78s. And as you can see, I've got an old Columbia 78 on there. I use that quite a bit to play the 78s. I've got a 78 stylus on the old original tone arm. Um, and uh, I will dub or digitize some of the 78s using that. Um, when I'm digitizing LPs, I'll use the old techniques. And on the techniques, I've got on the tone arm mounted an old Bang & Olufsen uh, uh, Naked Diamond, I think it's called CL something or other. Pretty high-end uh, 
cartridge anyway I've had for years because I had a Bang & Olufsen for years. Um, I've also managed to find, and these are difficult and expensive to get, but a bunch of Q4s. And uh, these are reel-to-reel -reel quadraphonic releases, usually considered the high-end, high fidelity of the early 70s. Uh, a couple of these babies were pretty tough to get, including Nilsson Schmilson by Nilsson, but the sound on these is so smooth with dynamic range it just blows your head off. Um, use either of my two reel-to-reel -reel quad decks to play those. I've also got a collection of some that I've made myself off the 8-tracks, and I must say, to my mind, they sound pretty good. I've also got, um, which I use occasionally, particularly with headphones, I will use my TAC X2000R reel-to-reel -reel deck. Um, same one they use on Pulp Fiction, as you may recognize. And it works beautifully. My built-in DVX on this, usually I'll end up using the headphones, uh, which I've got, which are the Sennheiser 1600s, uh, or whatever, the 800, sorry. They were a pile of money anyway, but beautiful, clear, natural sound out of these things. In the back corner, along with the wood stove and the supplies for the cats that live up here with me, is my spare reel-to-reels. Um, bunch of two-channel stuff. I try to collect seven and a half inch releases when I can. I've got a bunch of homemade uh, blank tapes which I use for re-recording on. A uh, box of brand new 3Ms that has never been opened. Um, that sort of thing. Stuff you collect, you know. A uh, bunch of spare quadraphonic Q8s. So basically, you know, this is kind of a playhouse. So I've got probably another 2500 LPs and another thousand CDs in my house. I don't seem to have the room out here for everything, but I bring them out as I need them. And I spend many happy winter nights just whiling away the time, just churning out the tunes. Uh, yeah, so just thought I'd post this. Uh, I don't think I'll show my face. You just have to imagine what I look like. I'm six foot four, wavy hair, handsome, about mid thirties dude with a six pack that you wouldn't hardly believe. And, uh, just a studly guy all the way around, as, you know, the voice would indicate. So, anyway, um, I hope I get many viewers on this. This is kind of fun. I'm not going to play any music because I understand that's kind of frowned upon if it's copyrighted. But uh, you'd have to believe me when I say you can just surround yourself out here. Um, yeah, it is quite profound some nights, days. Anyway, thank you for your time, folks.